<laughs> so if you've been watching any videos on this channel, then you already know that I've always been a massive Helix user. And you also might be asking yourself, Steve, where are all your Helix videos? What's been going on? And I just wanted to pop on here and explain to you why I no longer use my Helix. So there's both a long and short answer to this one. But first I'd like to just talk about how much this in particular, this backpack and this actual Helix mean to me. This was my first dive into digital modeling was this Helix floor and this backpack. It's been around the world with me many times everywhere. Take a look at this thing. Yeah. We've shared so much together. This is my taped up one that's all beat up. There's all edges frayed on it. Um, this thing is really beat to hell. And I actually love how beat up it is. Um, I say that I have a, a relict helix, which makes it more money, right? And th this old backpack is, at this point is falling apart. It's an amazing backpack. It's great. I've just abused it so much that the zippers have finally started to go on it, um, which is tragic, but I guess that's part of the life. So what first attracted me to the Helix um, was honestly just opportunity. One of my... Um, one of my heroes, a uh, session player that I was taking lessons with, and uh, one of my personal guitar heroes who is no longer with us, Ron Zabrocki, was using a Line 6 Helix and knew that I was going to Europe for the first time, and I didn't want to bring a real pedal board and rely on backline amps, so that was it for me. He said, dude, you have to go Helix. So I trusted him. I wound up with this Helix floor, and it's never left my side since. But in the last couple of years or so, I've been using it less and less. And the short answer is size. It's big. And I think moving into the future, you know, the future modelers are getting smaller and smaller than this, except for the Headrush Prime. But um, I think that smaller is better. I think that built-in expression pedals, unnecessary. I don't use an expression pedal. Don't use a volume pedal. I barely even use a wah pedal. Um, so typically I wouldn't even have that on my board, but other than that, like if line six ever released like a helix that had just from here over, like if we just got rid of, yeah, right. If we just got rid of this whole thing and kept it the, exactly the same, then I think it would still be a no brainer for me to always take my helix floor with me. Um, the ins and outs are great. Everything on it is exactly what anybody would want. And now the longer answer is that I've scaled back my mindset when it comes to my gigging and my, and my studio use. I'm no longer needing the, the heavy horsepower of a Helix, of a full Helix floor. I don't need this, the two signal paths. And as nice as the scribble strips are, I can make do without them. And the way that we do things is always travel friendly. I travel a lot with music gear and I really need the lightest and most efficient setup, which is why this actually was so amazing for the longest time because this with a backpack and I'm done. But since then, a lot more options have come out and kind of want to fast forward here to what I've been using, which is readily accessible. And this is the new touring board. As you can see, fully covered in dust, <laughs> as usual. I, I play these things out. I, I, can't, I can't waste time cleaning these things. This is what I've been touring with and been loving and obsessed with. And I don't miss the Helix floor at all because of this board. I've got my favorite Overdrive Nordland ODRC, which there's still just something about being able to touch real knobs and be, you know, clicking a real pedal, something that's reliable, something that you know is going to be great. I There's still just something about a real pedal. And then the brain here, HX Stomp XL, um, spending so much time on Helix, I have learned and taught and shared every known trick tip in the book that I possibly can. 
And they're all on the channel if you want to check them out. And I kind of circled back to simple and simple being better. Dial in a good amp and cabinet sound and get by with minimal pedals. I've been so free since doing that where I don't need the full power of a Helix floor and get by one signal path in the HX Stump XL. I have my touring preset available for sale on my website below, stevestrohachi.com, if you do want to check out the actual preset that I'm taking on the road. I also have a new landing page from Sweetwater where you can basically shop all of the gear that I use, including everything on this pedal board. And um, if you haven't heard yet, I'm starting a podcast called The Silent Stage Podcast where it's going to be all things digital amp modeling and all the all the major players are going to be on there. It's going to be a, always a fun discussion about amp modeling, amp capturing, profiling, load boxes, whatever your thing is. I'm planning on having guests that use it because I, as you can see, I use it all. So I want to talk about it all. And I want to talk to other professionals that are really way better at this than I am and uh, get some cool insight on that stuff. So be sure to check out my mailing list if that's something you're into and you want to check out the podcast. And other things on this board that are really important. Eventide H90. So I don't, it's not that the Helix or the HX stuff is bad with delays and reverbs, but just the H90 is just so easy and it sounds so good. Like the, there, there's two things in here. I can use two, two, two effects and that warrants taking up this much space on my board because it has a tap tempo and then it's got a spring reverb, which sounds better than a real spring reverb. So I actually had for a while a real 63 Fender reverb unit and the Eventide spring reverb blows it away. It sounds better. It sounds clear. There's no quirks. There's no weird stuff. It's just a perfect spring reverb. And that's kind of what made me say like, this is worth its weight and just that. Then there's all these cool 80s rack mount delays, stuff that I've never been able to really use that I can just pull up cool presets on and uh, and pop them up here. So uh, it handles really high DSP stuff really well. It's a, basically a whole computer in itself, just like the Helix is. And I really love the effects in it and it's an awesome unit. And the main reason why I'm modular in this setup, this is my uh, Shure QLX wireless. I've tried the GLX and I've tried the, the small Line 6G series wireless i i don't know if it's that we play festivals and we, we're doing a lot of running around on stage but i get dropouts with everything this is the first real big boy wireless that you know scans for open frequencies and sticks to it and it's strong and it's never once let me down if you have better wireless solutions that are less big than this please let me know in the comments because this has been rock solid and i have no complaints other than it's freaking huge but that's why I have this board laid out the way it is. Everything on this is being powered by True Tone CS6. Don't mind the dog hair and the and the people hair from <laughs> this thing is just always on a floor somewhere. Um, One Spot Pro CS6. Um, this thing powers everything by itself. Uh, there's no extra power supplies on here, just the True Tone, and it powers this board with no problem. And I've really been loving it. This is a uh, a DI box from Klotz Cables that works awesome. It's just a standard DI box. I like to have a DI box on hand because if you toured and if you have ever been in venues where they tell you that they have DI boxes, they do, but are they really DI boxes? <laughs> you show up and these people, they sometimes pull out I don't even know where they get these things from, but it looks like they're a hundred years old and that they barely work. Most times they don't. So I like to just be self-contained, just give me an XLR cable and then I'm done. And now to be fair, and not too much of a, of a Line 6 fanboy, I've been using the FM9 in the studio all the time, even with my, my amps behind me, because I'm getting really great amp sounds out of this, really great um, lead stuff. This... It really does a great job. Um, I've thought about taking the Fractal over the HX Stump XL setup, but the thing with this is that it is heavy. It's it's almost just as heavy. I, I got to look at the weights, but I still think that the whole board is lighter than this, 
and I wouldn't be able to have the wireless set up. If I just didn't need a wireless and if I just needed a smaller but really powerful floor modeler, um, the FM9 would definitely be something that I would probably be doing over the Helix floor just from a size perspective. And the fact that this has two XLR outs, I can do mine and Jessica's guitar through it at the same time. And I know it would sound great. For some reason, my sound is more in Helix when I'm doing the original stuff. I don't know why. It just, I sound better on a Helix than I sound on the Fractal. That's not a testament to the unit. It's purely the user that, like I always say, you can make these things sound as good or, or as bad as you possibly can. But um, I've been getting more comfortable with the FM9. I really dig it, except I broke it. Um, something fell out of my closet back there and landed on my value encoder. So that no longer works. And um, and I gotta, I'd have to pay to get it fixed. I mean, it, it works. I can get by as is. Using the Fractal on board on the unit isn't amazing as it is anyway. So it's not like I would really do it much. I don't think, I don't know if it'd be worth paying to get it fixed, but overall, I've also been enjoying the FM9. It's got the scribble strips. It's smaller than the Helix. It doesn't have a built-in expression pedal and it does the fractal thing. When they dropped firmware six on this, I think it's an absolute game changer. Everything is seamless, seamless amp switching. Um, I think totally put fractal ahead of its time just constantly updating this thing like it's crazy how much they update this and how much time and effort they put in this these guys are all in with this stuff like everybody that works there is just doing fractal stuff and um and you could tell they put a lot of time a lot of effort into these things and they sound awesome And now, of course, all of this is still subject to change. My setup's constantly changing. Um, I just, I don't like settling on things. I like to change things up. I like to try new things. I'm sure you do too. And if you are interested in what else I try, check out the landing page below with all of my gear listed that's in the studio and on stage with me. And yeah, that is exactly why I am not using my Helix anymore. If you made it this far in the video, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.